Hello YouTube. This week I've got the keys to a 2017 Honda CRV touring model. Let's take a look. So this is the 2017 Honda CRV. This is the touring trim, um, which is just under, uh, just over 40 grand, just under $41,000. This is the top of the line trim, uh, powered by a small 1.5 liter turbo engine, actually, um, and it's mated it to a CVT transmission. So this engine's only about 160 horsepower, um, so it's not a rocket ship with the all-wheel drive, and it's a pretty big vehicle, uh, but we'll get to that. Um, features, it's got quite a bit of features, leather seating, uh, radar cruise control, navigation, uh, dual zone climate control, panoramic sunroof, all those types of things, and uh, a power tailgate, um, which we can open with the remote here. Or we can't open with the remote, nice. Um, that's because the, the vehicle's actually on right now. But we can open it with this. And in here you've got a nice large cargo cover and there's quite a bit of quite a bit of space in this vehicle actually um, so like I said it is quite big and you've got this floor here which which will give you a flat floor if you uh, fold down the seats and then you can also dump this down and get even more height which is really cool and then underneath there you've got your full-size spare uh, with your jack no other kind of fancy cargo areas or anything you can put some stuff inside the wheel but uh, that's about it and do have some cargo lights back here and then these these handles here 60 40 split um, with the 60 on the driver's side and you pull this handle and that seat will fall down so there you go so you'll see it see it's not flat in here um, with this but if we move that up to there then you've got a flat loading floor if you've got some flat pack boxes and you've got an anchor here, um, so you can anchor th some things down as well. The seats are quite heavy um, to bring back up, but not too bad. Um, they are well, you know, nice, nicely padded. Uh, as you can see here, it's quite squishy. You've got some cup holders in the middle, and they look they look pretty good. A ton of leg room in this vehicle, and that panoramic sunroof I mentioned. In the back, you've got a uh, couple of uh, USB slots uh, for charging, which I guess is kind of smart. Most people are carrying around iPads and things like that now. They don't really want to be carrying their 115 or 120 volt plugs. Uh, just carry that. And you've got these are powerful enough, two and a half amp, which is pretty good. Should keep your iPads charged or your Android devices, things like that. Um, you got a mat pocket on one side only, not on the other side. Um, like I said, tons of leg room in these uh, in the back here. You've got heated seats in the back with three position, which is pretty darn rare. I've seen two position heated seats in the back, but three is pretty rare. Um, you do have power windows, but they're not automatic in the back um, or auto down or auto up. You kind of got to pull them yourself. Give you that view of the front that I like to do, and then we'll go along the front. Up front here, um, you're kind of inundated with screens. You've got a nice large screen here uh, in the center which shows you your tachometer digitally and your speedometer digitally as well as your, you know, there's the P for park. So if uh, we pull that back, you'll see neutral drive. Um, there's an error on this one here. So you'll see it flash up every once in a while. The tire pressure is low. The tire pressure is not low. So I don't know, perhaps the sensors messed up or not on uh not they weren't put in by the dealer i'm not sure um on this screen here you know you've got a bunch of stuff like your fuel economy and this car i've been averaging eight and a half liters per hundred kilometers over about half a tank of fuel which is very impressive for a large vehicle like this um, that cvt transmission does really help with that um, it doesn't help with the driving dynamics, but it helps with the fuel economy and the 1.5 liter engine, which isn't super powerful. Uh, it gets the car moving, gets great fuel economy, but doesn't 
really excite you, but we'll see that in a minute. Temperature gauge over on the left, um, and it's all digital, and the fuel gauge as well, which I find kind of hard to read. Um, they've got like a brighter white line to show you the fuel level, and then it's kind of grayed out, so you can kind of see it. Hopefully the camera picks it up. I don't know if that's going to be flashing or blinking, but it is, it's not the easiest gauges to read in the world. Um, on the left-hand side, you've got a heated um, windshield wiper uh, area on, this, on the windshield, which is really nice to have. A button to open up the trunk, traction control on and off, and then you've got collision mitigation you can turn on and off, and lane departure mitigation you can turn on and off. Um, now, if you have that lane departure mitigation on and you're driving, what it does is it's always moving the steering wheel, trying to kind of keep you centered in that lane. It is annoying. <laughs> it really is annoying. So I've, I've had it off. Uh, I tried it on for like 10 minutes and I, I couldn't stand it. Um, it does have, uh, you'll see here, um, there's another button here for lane keep assist as well. It'll show in there. When I press this button, it shows in there. It goes on and off. Now that will still work without the lane mitigation. And what that does is when you exit the lane, it shakes the steering wheel back and forth and it comes up with a message that says, you know, watch where you're going basically, uh, or, you know, something like that. Um, now on the steering wheel, you've got, you know, you've got that, you've got your cruise control, which is uh, radar cruise. Um, so you can set your distance. You got a nice heated steering wheel button right there, which is a perfect spot right at your thumb. And you've got your phone and I've, if you watched my Civic review, I complained about this same thing in the Civic. Um, well, okay, so that's kind of cool. You don't have to push the button. Um, you can just kind of slide it on there, slide your thumb on there while you're driving. So that is kind of neat. Um, it's not that I was complaining about, sorry. Uh, what I was complaining about is this uh, this keypad here, which, which controls the screen uh, in the middle. Sometimes, sometimes it controls the radio over on the right-hand side, so it's a little bit confusing. So now if I put it in this mode, then it does control that. So a little bit confusing. I think you get used to it after a while. Uh, although this is two Hondas I've driven, I'm still a little bit confused by it, but getting better at it. In the center here, you've got, um, I think what it is, is an Android uh, run, you know, Honda skinned uh, infotainment system. Uh, it's not my favorite. Uh, it works, but it's not my favorite. It's, it works okay. Uh, it's not super responsive. See, like I hit that button and then the beep is just a, a fraction of a second too late. Like I want it to just kind of go. Nowadays, everybody's kind of used to their iPhones and their Android phones, which are really super quick. It's just not quite there. Um, but you know, it does have everything you want in there. Uh, or in, I guess enough things. It's got apps and things like that. Um, I haven't plugged in um, to get the gallery and features, which I did on the Civic, and then it kind of crashed the crashed the thing. Um, depends what you're looking for, I guess. An infotainment system. These tiny little buttons and little tiny features, like you got your little calculator here and that. I don't, I don't know why you'd want that when you're driving. Um, anyways. It looks like it looks like it's definitely Android to me, and it still needs to be updated. I guess I'd rather plug my phone in, use Android Auto, than use that. Now, what they did do for this versus the Civic is they added a volume knob. Thank you, Honda, for the volume knob. Um, the sliding on your finger on here is brutal. There is uh, three settings uh, for the heated seats on passenger and driver, just like the rear, of course. Uh, and you've got dual zone climate control on here as well. Now there is an electronic parking brake and a brake hold. The brake hold's kind of nice if you press that and then you're driving, you come to a stop, you just let go of the brake and the thing will hold until you press the throttle. Um, ergonomically, this is really nice. You've got uh, you know, your shifter right here, easy to reach, your, your steering wheel, you know, everything is, I'm you know, not very tall and this is easy to reach easy to access everything which I really I really do like um, down at the bottom you got a 12 volt plug a couple cup holders and I'll scooch over here and you've got some storage here and then a bin 
uh, under your armrest. Now this is cool too, so you've got a fairly large bin under the armrest here, and this slides to reveal a couple more USB plugs and another 12 volt uh, adapter. And there's a couple of USBs, which are, one's a one amp, one's a one and a half amp for charging. So one shows charge your phone. And the, again, the rear ones were two and a half amps. Um, and this, this comes off fairly easily. So if you just want to have a nice large bin, uh, you've got a large bag, uh, a lot of women carry their purse and they just want to dump their purse there. You can do that and close that. And then, you know, you can pull your purse out. So that's kind of nice of uh, Honda to give you that. And it's fairly easy to put back in there you go and you just slide that back in. in terms of fit and finish this is all kind of rubbery fake leather pretty sure it's fake leather um, but it's nice uh, it's you know nicely finished down here doesn't feel cheap at all anywhere really this may be a little bit here but this is kind of nicely you know nice smooth plastics kind of all built nice and you've got these trim pieces and this fake plasticky wood um, it looks good you know on initial impressions are good on this you do have memory seats as well and uh, auto down front windows but not auto down auto down and up front windows I should say and not auto down or auto up uh, rear windows and then up top um, you've got sunglasses holder, which actually stops halfway, and then you can see the rear uh, passengers, which is nice. It's kind of a minivan feature. And if you pull that all the way down, you've got your sunglasses holder. Sun visors with two lights on it. And uh, you've got home link here for your garage doors, three buttons for the garage doors. And... You've got uh, your controls for your sunroof, which we've got a one-touch close. Let's see if that closes all the way. And it does. So there you go. You get a one-touch close and a one-touch open, or you can stop it at any point along the way. Well, that's it for the interior. Uh, let's take it for a drive. All right, so the first thing you'll notice with this vehicle on the road is it's gutless. So it really doesn't have much power. Uh, maybe, it, you know, it could just be me. A lot of people seem to enjoy this vehicle. So, um, you know, I like a little bit more oomph than what this, this offers. You really got to put your foot in it. And as you just heard, let me do it again. It's noisy, very, very noisy. Uh, that's you know that CVT, CVT transmission just kind of dumps the revs up and it just drones and um, yeah it doesn't it doesn't sound good at all. If you know if you keep your foot light on the throttle, um, the CVT is great because it keeps the revs low around 2,000 on normal acceleration uh, and it's not too noisy. So that's when it works great and it's great on fuel. I'm averaging eight and a half liters per hundred kilometers, but. Uh, you know, not a huge fan of the CVT transmission on a low-powered car. Uh, it's just no fun when you want to get on the gas. You'll also notice uh, when you drive this that this uh, shifter, for one, it's beautifully placed. I keep, I'm not even a person that drives with my, you know, my hands on a shifter. I kind of usually drive with one hand on the steering wheel, one on the armrest on the right, on the left side. And my hand just wants to sit there. It's beautiful. It's super comfortable. Um, and the seats are really comfortable and it was really easy for me to get in a comfortable position in this car. Um, so those are really good traits, but it's noisy. Um, you know, not just the acceleration, the, you know, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit too much road noise at $40,000 in this vehicle. You know, if I, if I, if I quiet for a second, you might hear it. And you know, so there's. There is road noise there, and there's some kind of rattle coming from up here someplace. I don't know. Uh, this vehicle doesn't have very many kilometers on it, so that's kind of annoying. Um, you know, Honda build quality is usually pretty good, um, and I'm not super impressed by that rattle uh, in this in this model. Uh, might be easy easy fix though, and of course, under warranty, probably not that big a deal. 
Um, is it fun to drive? Yeah, it actually is kind of fun to drive despite the lack of power. It handles really well. It kind of feels tossable, flickable, like all Hondas tend to tend to be um, because they're you know they're sometimes lighter than their competition or they uh, or they tend to make the car feel lighter than their competition somehow. And some people now kind of go the opposite and say, well, it's light because it's not built very well. I'm not sure that's really true. It's, you know, they're built well, Hondas are known the last, so. But over this rough pavement, you can really hear the tires constantly kind of crumbling over the pavement and it's, and it's kind of annoying. There you have it, the 2017 Honda CRV Touring Edition. You know, I complain about the power, but uh, it's pretty much the only thing that I can really complain about uh, on this thing. Uh, you know, it drives really, really well. I guess the noise uh, is the other one. A uh, little bit noisy, a little bit underpowered, uh, but really nice interior um, and, uh, and a good sized uh, all wheel drive vehicle that's been proven to have uh, actually a really good all wheel drive system. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.